Well, greetings and salutations. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Arrow After Show. Uh, my name is John. I am your host for today. Thanks for uh, joining us here on Wednesday, April, what is it, 23rd? 23rd. April 23rd. We just watched episode 20 of uh, season two of Arrow. My name is John Campy. I'm your host today. And join me, of course, uh, are my co-hosts. First of all, starting with Kaori. Kaori, how you doing? I'm pretty pissed right now, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and beside her, of course, is Anne. Holy crap. I thought that was Stephen Amell for a second. Is that you, honey? <laughs> no, it is I, Stephen Amell. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have known. Also a Canadian. I should do it like this. There we go. I think you need the voice, the yeah, voice changing voice thing. I'm like. Stephen Amell. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's more Batman. Uh. <laughs> okay so we just um holy crap so we just watched uh episode 20 I, I don't even know what the name of the episode was i didn't look uh seeing red or something yeah, seeing red seeing red is the name of the episode well we just watched seeing red and um holy crap holy crap uh, you know it's funny because before the episode started we all knew someone was going to die this episode. I, I think we talked about mm -hmm. that, right? We all knew someone was going to die. And I was convinced it was going to be Sarah. And then when the episode started, and it's Sarah and Ollie in bed, talking, maybe we should move in together. And oh, I love you so much. And all your boobs are so soft. And then you just kind of instantly thought, oh, no, they're going to kill Sarah. And, you know, Sarah, Sarah's tied as my favorite auxiliary character in the show with Diggle. You know, everybody knows I, I really love the Sarah character. And I was so pissed because I thought for sure, oh my gosh, they just totally telegraphed her. They're going to kill Sarah. And I was so mad. You're they, mad that they didn't kill her? No, no, I was so mad because I thought they were going to kill her. You oh, know, it's okay. like, oh, damn it. And they killed Moira. Yeah. They what? killed Moira. I remember we were talking about it in previous after shows about that would be crazy and the plots that would grow from her and i'm really upset that that happened i'm at a loss for words because i wasn't prepared to have her die at least not till the very end of the season mm -hmm. well i was thinking uh, once once it became kind of clear okay maybe it's not sarah then i then I, it felt like they were setting up that thea was gonna die mm. And then she didn't die. And they killed Moira. Look, well, let's, we'll get into the positive and negatives about the episode. But let me say this. Um, I always said, since the end of season one, when they killed Tommy, the writers and the showrunners of this show made it clear to us that anything goes. That nobody's off limits. When they killed Tommy, that was it. It, it was everybody's fair game. Um, and killing Moira... Okay, why I why I really lament that they killed Moira is because she was easily the strongest female character on the show. She's the str as as a woman as a character, she was the strongest one. She's tough as nails. She's the one you do not. I would rather cross Black Canary before I would cross Moira Queen. Um, and she is clearly the strongest female character, and I love what she brought to the show. That being said, you can't do anything but admire the guts of these showrunners to kill off significant key characters and once again keep us on their toes. I said it that when they killed Tommy, it meant anything goes. And now they killed Moira and it really says anything goes. Ollie's off limits. But other than Ollie, huh. anybody can die on this show in any episode. So I'm just re -throw And You know what? Speaking of showrunners, before I go any further, I want you guys to know about something. So... Uh, and knows what I'm about to bring up here. But um, this past weekend, we all went to WonderCon, right? Uh, that's here in, uh, that was in Anaheim, Anaheim. California. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all went. But uh, Anne had two different outfits. And on the first day, she went as Green Arrow. I want to just bring up a couple of pictures here of Anne as Green Arrow. Here's Anne having run into a couple of other Green Arrows. Uh, I really like this picture of you, Anne. I, I think, think you look great in there. Three arrows is better than one. Yes, That's for sure. Uh -huh. That's what she said. Okay, so, uh, so I love I that one. I do have arrows in my quiver. And has arrow for in her those quivers. that were wondering. <laughs> um, so, and then later on in the day, we had a chance to catch up and meet uh, showrunner for Arrow, Mark Guggenheim. 
Yeah. And we got to uh, hang out and chat with him. As a matter of fact, it looks like he's going to come on the Arrow after show in the next couple of weeks nice. with us, which is going to be great. So there's Anne had a chance to hang out with uh, Mark Guggenheim for a bit, and we had a chance to talk to him, and that was wonderful. Um, so, yeah. So, okay. All that being said, let's get into the positives and the negatives about this episode. Uh, Anne, let's actually start with you this time. Let's. What are the positives about this episode of Arrow for you? Uh, first and foremost, uh, Susanna Thompson, thank you for being on the show. Um, I'm a little choked up because Moira was my favorite character. Yeah, so I'm sad. like really bummed. Um, there's a lot of people that are like, get your tissues, get your tissues. And I'm like, why? That's why. Because Moira is gone. She was, like John said, the strongest female character. Um, the actress, Susanna, was to me the strongest female actress on the show yeah and so mm -hmm. we're losing a high caliber actress at the same time that we're losing the ca the character so that is a great point it's not just a great character yeah we're losing one of the stronger performers on the show oh, too i completely yeah. believe yeah, that you're and right I've you're so right wholeheartedly have always said that she's been my favorite actress favorite character i wanted to see more more of her so as a positive this episode was one of my favorites because it was moira centric yeah whereas the title Whereas the trailer made you think this was all about Roy. It really wasn't. Roy was just a catalyst for everything else that was happening. Um, and I'm happy that we got to see this much of Moira and it being her last episode um, in, this, in the series. Um, needless to say, I loved all of the scenes with her and Oliver. I think those were so powerful, the dialogue between them. I love yeah. that the flashback scenes were predominantly them two and how their relationship is has grown and the foundation for the relationship and what this woman will do for her children and for the good of her children. I mean, you may not agree with it, obviously, but this character is strong. And yeah, like and John I, said, I, I like wouldn't that. want to mess with her. I, I, I like the fact that even when she's doing things that were the wrong things, you can never question what her motivations were. Yeah. Her motivation was always for what does she think is best for her kids. And yeah, there's something that really made her a nice multi-layered character. Oh, completely. You know, and I, I um, and we'll get to it in the negatives too, because Moira's death obviously can be a positive and a negative for the show. Uh, I'm excited to see where they're go they're, they are going to go with this. I know last week, uh, you fans semi predicted it that that we would see a scene like this where. Oliver had to choose between two women in his life, and we saw yeah. that exactly the way you guys illustrated it last week. We saw that this week. I just never would have guessed it would have been Thea and Moira Queen. Yep. Um, that being said, there was a lot of other stuff going on, but I'm still trying to internalize the fact that I will no longer see Moira, maybe just in flashback scenes. So um, for that reason, Susanna Thompson, thank you again. And I love this episode because it was heavily Moira driven. Corey? Yeah. I, I got pretty choked up myself, and I also wrote that I love that it was a Moira-centric episode. We saw the lengths. She would go for Ollie. I love the Ollie-mother bonding. And her line, one of her last lines to her, him after she reveals that she knows what he is, is that she cannot be more proud of him. Mm -hmm. And, oh, that just... And the ending, it made me cry. Um, she was about to tell the kids... They were going to turn a new leaf and start the telling the truth about she was going to say Merlin was alive. That didn't happen. Another positive, well, for me, Oliver has a baby in Central City. Yeah, that, that is something that can very easily <laughs> be forgotten about, yeah. right, in mm -hmm. this episode. Is that out there somewhere, uh, Ollie's got a little Ollie running around. Yeah. And yeah. you can easily forget about that with the ending of this episode. Uh -huh. yeah. Like the seed has been planted. Now we know he has an offspring somewhere. Um Slade Wilson, once again, Manu Bennett, phenomenal acting. He is crazy, and he is out for revenge like nothing else. He's ruthless. And uh, I also like that Oliver shows that he is different from Canary in that he has hope and he has, you know, light in him. And always, I just got to give a shout-out to Felicity and Diggle because they always give us a sense of positivity in the episodes. So, yep. I've got... Um I got a laundry list of things that I think are pretty good uh, about this episode. And I'm just kind of adjusting my mask here. As you know, the hood's got to come back. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now, now we can talk about the pauses of this episode. Um, I, I, You know what? Um, upon reflection, totally should have seen that Moira's death coming. I mean, totally should have seen it. 
as soon as they start mating, making the flashbacks, her flashbacks, instead of Ollie's flashbacks, as soon as they did that, I should have clued in that she was going to die. Then, then she tells Ollie, I know. And right there, I totally should have clued in. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, yeah, okay, more, more is gone. <laughs> Bye, more. <laughs> like, clear. And, but still, I, it, it didn't click with me. I, I didn't figure it out. And now here I am in retrospect thinking, wow, that, that really went badly. Um, dramatically, this is one of the best episodes they've ever had. Uh-huh. It wasn't the action and it wasn't all this and that. It, it was just the most dramatically satisfying episode they've done of this episode so far. Uh, great performances all around from, from, every, from the whole, you know, all the characters uh, with Thea Diggle. Um, Felicity. That scene, um, um, sorry to interrupt, but that scene where Oliver is somewhat elated and kind of um, relieved that he thinks that he's not having a child. Oh, that, so well done. The yeah. acting was well yeah. done. That's exactly the, the reaction I would have considered him having in that scene. Uh-huh. And we've said this before, but, but it bears repeating and it stands out. Amel gets better and better mm-hmm. and better and better and better as the show continues and as it goes on and on and on he's inhabiting this character more but he's also sharpening his acting skills and really bringing it out more and more and then every once in a while we get hit with an episode like this that really gives him a showcase to do it and you're right that scene so key such yeah. a key scene really for him and i thought that was just beautifully done um i really liked the the confrontation slash meeting between moira and blood in his office i thought that was really well played um uh, you know just uh, again dramatically i i found it to be the most satisfying episode they've ever done and you know i'm i'm part pissed off mm-hmm. and part shocked and part in wonder about the fact that they killed moira and really that's what you hope the death of a character like this would do to an audience. And so on that, they hit it perfectly. They hit it perfectly in stride. Um, And you just get the feeling now that Slade is now going from Oliver knows he's got to stop him. I I have to have a feeling that at some point here, he just watched Deathstroke drive a sword through his mother. At some point, I've got a feeling that killer switch is going to go off in Oliver. Now, they could go one of two ways, right? Oliver could go into despair at this point for a couple of episodes. Or that switch could be thrown. He could go back to Sarah now next episode, and it's like, no, 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 no. Screw the light. Screw that light you see in me. That's gone now. Mm -hmm. We do things your way. We're going to go end this dude. Uh, and let's do it, which kind of excites me on, on, on another level as well. Uh, I love that Roy had very few lines. Uh, no, he, he had one line. Kill me. Kill me. And I was like, yes, yes, kill him. Kill him. No, but honestly, I, I, uh, but, uh, I like that performance too. Actually, this one, I, act, I liked Roy. I liked what he did in this episode too. Um, it just, uh, all around, fantastic. Uh-huh. Now let's get into the negatives. This one negative is almost unfair because it's not really just about this episode, but it is a running theme for the last couple of episodes. Since when did Thea own the club? That's what I'm saying. We were talking about that. (laughs) It's like, okay, and I've always wondered this because I get it. Ollie went away for a bunch of months and she started running the club. But at what point did ownership of the club get transferred to her? She never bought it off of Ollie. I, I just I don't understand when or how that happened, and I, I understand they can do it. I just wish they would have explained at some point how that really happened. Well, That's a minor thing. I, I, it's not really an important. I detail. never took it as you know in the literal sense that she has the the the, own, the ownership of the club, like her name is signed somewhere on the deed for the club. I think it's just her reaction as a spoiled as a spoiled child going through some crap, learning who her father is. So the first thing that the only ammunition she has is this club that she manages every day. So she feels like she is entitled and has some sort of ownership in it, being the spoiled, uh, rotten child that she is that's reacting to all of these things that she's discovering. I don't I don't agree. And I, so she's I, trying to use that against Moira, but obviously, to me, it just came off as really whiny. I think you're saying she owned it, because Moira said to her, yeah. we've got a contract. So she didn't sign that contract with Oliver. It was with Thea. So, like, she, she's functioning as the owner of the club. And it's like, so I, I just don't understand. Once again, not important. It's not an important detail at all. Um, as far as the other negatives go, I don't... 
you know me, guys. I, I, I believe if you're really a fan of something, you want to pick out the negatives because that just gets you more into it and hopefully it elevates the show too. But honestly, I, I can't. I can't think of an of a true element of this episode that made me go, mm, they didn't do this part quite right. I, honestly, it was a very, very satisfying episode. I can't think of any... What about you guys? Have you come up with any negatives? Um, I think they did everything right in this episode, but being nitpicky, things that bothered me, from a personal standpoint, I'm very sad that Moira's dead. So yes, that can kind of come off as a negative. Um, hopping off that fan wagon, Thea was just being such a brat. I'm guessing she didn't sign those papers, but she should be concerned too because she is also the one that needs money from the queen wealth. So what the heck is that? Because she's like throwing in his face, now you're going to be broke too. Well, so are you. <laughs> um, Canary leaving. I'm not a super fan of Canary. I just didn't like the way she left. Like, oh, I realized I was going to kill Roy. I'm leaving. Hopefully she comes but, back. But I mean, you get the feeling that she said when she says, where are you going? Going to see an old friend. So is she going back to the League of Assassins? Is mm. there something? Is there another element at play? I got. She ain't gone. I don't yeah, think. I don't, I think don't she's believe gone she's gone for no. good either. Um, and I also, I'm a Roy Harper fan, but I didn't like how his Royd rage was being showcased in this particular episode. I don't know how they could have done it better. I just didn't really like it. Um, and I think he's going. To the Arsenal side very, very quickly. But that's about it. And? Uh, negatives. Obviously, what Kaori said. Slade killed Moira. <laughs> so while it's a positive, it's also a big negative for me. Because that's my favorite character. Um, I don't know where you would put this. But up to this point, I love Deathstroke. And I still do. I love Slade Wilson. But now, as a super fan of Moira and seeing her death. And it's at the hands of Deathstroke. I'm pissed at that character. Mm. Fuck Deathstroke. I want something to happen to him. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a positive or a negative, but the the showrunners, the writers have got me on the side of screw you, Deathstroke. Something bad needs to happen to you. So um, for that, uh, going off of what Corey said, for me, I enjoyed the Roy scenes. I enjoyed that it was all visual and not really so much a uh, uh, verbal communication to the fans um, but I thought this was going to be his episode for me because of the way it was marketed because of the title of the show I really thought this was going to be the episode for me that would turn me on to really loving the character of Roy um, I wanted to mm -hmm. see a little more dialogue from him uh, not that being said I'm sure there are upcoming episodes where we are going to get more more Roy uh, more Roy dialogue and more Roy being Roy and not this Roy rage guy that's running around town killing people and hurting people. Um, I can't wait for that because I do want to like this character as well. Um, and as always, not enough Diggle and Felicity in one scene. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that, that does continue to be for me a weakness of the show overall. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm not really Stephen Amell. It's me, John. I'm back. Um, <laughs> That that continues to be a weakness, a, a general weakness for me overall the, of the of the show, um, and I don't even know if I call it a weakness as much as this is an area they could improve. This show could stand an extra scene or two each episode with Diggle and Felicity. There, I, I just feel these these characters are just too good. Now, just because you have a good character doesn't mean you completely showcase them every time. But I feel like. Give them one or two more scenes each. They, they just need a little bit more time because these are great characters that people love. They add a lot, and I, I think you just need to go back to that a little bit. There was a period, there was a, a scope of about four episodes there where it was really the Trinity. It was really Oliver, Felicity, mm -hmm. and Diggle. Yeah. And those were really great uh, when we got to see all three of them. And that's become diluted a lot. I understand you had to make some room for Roy. You got to make some room for Sarah in there, but... I really like to get more back to that a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, that's us talking about our positive and negatives. We want to spend a couple minutes now. We asked you guys to jump on Twitter and tweet to us some questions at hashtag Arrow After Show. And a whole bunch of you guys did. So we're going to take a few minutes now and answer your questions that you've tweeted in. So, Anne, what do we got? Uh, Sri Lock Holmes. Very nice Twitter nice. handle, by the way. Asked, do you believe um, the major death from this episode is the last major death of the season? Uh, no, I, I, I used to believe being such a significant villain 
that Deathstroke would make it into season three. I no longer believe that. I no, lo I no longer believe Ollie's going to let him live between now and then. Now, uh, Deathstroke over also said there is one more death that has to happen before this is over. I think he's clearly going to go after Sarah. Uh, but will Sarah die? I'm not so sure anymore. I'm starting to get a feeling that if... She, and I'm t completely speculating here, guys. I, like, I could be so wrong about this. I have a feeling she went back to the League of Assassins because mm -hmm. she's realizing she's still filled with this darkness. And with uh, Slade gone, I believe the League of Assassins take a much bigger role in Season 3. That maybe they become the villain behind the curtain at that point. T could be totally wrong. Could be totally wrong. But no, I don't think the major deaths are done yet. What do you guys think? I, I think I read that uh, Daddy Merlin was coming back as well. For Yes. Oh, yeah. So we know he's coming back. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I definitely think that someone is going to die that's a main character soon. And I think it might be Slade. Um, I... Don't know that Slade would have necessarily painted his own death, but in that last scene, he did say that this is, I have one more person I have to kill on this list of yeah, people I think that was, I want to hurt. Sarah. Mm -hmm. I think he clearly um, Sarah. And we have heard from the showrunners that one of Team Arrow will probably not make it through the rest of the season. So I have to believe that's either going to be Sarah or Roy because it would not be the Trinity. If they did that, that would just kill me. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I feel like Roy is going to make it to the third season and become more important at some point. Speaking of the mic. Sorry, uh, that Roy will become more important, important in season three, but that, this is just not his season. So I don't think he's gone. And really, Roy... Uh, I don't think this is his show. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I just don't think this is his show. But I mean, if Slade is going down this path of I want to hurt everybody that means something to you, then obviously Sarah means a lot more to not, to Oliver than Roy does. Well, and Sarah's mm -hmm. the one that lived instead of Shadow. Yep. So I, th yeah. I, th I think he's going to go after her, but whether he succeeds is another question. All right, what's next? Okay, so Hawkeye396 asks, what did y'all think about Sarah choosing to end it with Oliver, and who is the old friend she is going to see? Well, I've already said I'm speculating the old friend is is her ex-girlfriend, and, and she's going back to the League, uh -huh. League of Shadows. That, that's, but I'm just speculating. As far as her ending thing with um, Oliver, really, that's what Oliver's been doing the whole show. Oliver has been ending relationships and, and distancing himself because he cares about them. So I really thought that that speech she gave him was very was very much an echo about, especially going to Oliver. The irony of that is that that's what Oliver's been doing for almost two seasons. And now he's got somebody doing that to him. I care about you too much to be with you, to be around you. I have to separate myself from you. I got to do this. I got to do that. And really, that's the irony of that of that whole scene and why I like that scene so much. So uh, I appreciated it. I did. I really thought it was kind of cool. Was the dialogue a little cheesy in that little speech she gave him? Yes. Yes, the dialogue was a little bit cheesy. Could have been sharper. But other than that, but I, I like the, the, the heart behind it. So I thought it was pretty cool. What do you guys think? What? Oh, uh agree with everything John said. I did not mind the breakup. I thought it, there was the right motivation behind what she was saying. While it was cheesy, it was the right thing to say at, at the right time. And it shows really the growth of the two characters um, and the evolution of Oliver to becoming not so much a killer and how Sarah ha hasn't hit that point in her in her life yet. Um, I also agree with John that I think she's going to see Nyssa and I think that she's going back to those that taught her about the darkness to see. I don't know. I don't know why she would want to go back there. Maybe because she feels like she belongs there after the realization that she wanted to kill Roy. I'm not, sh not sure. But here's the thing that gives me about that scene. She could have killed Roy and she didn't. She had the gun on his head. Mm -hmm. She could have blown him away. And then when he did drop um, Thea, instead of taking him out in the chest or blowing a hole through his head, she shot him through the knee just to immobilize him. It's like, what, what, are, you, what are you talking about? You have no light in you. You you could have killed him easily and you didn't. And the, and the fact that she left Oliver because she's afraid that she has no light in her proves that she kind of does have light in her still. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea who her friend might be. It could be Nisa. I have a crazy thought that even though they're not really friends, but because she thinks she's so dark, she might go visit Huntress. <laughs> Because we've seen them kind of fighting together. I don't know what the benefit of that would be, I, though. I don't know either. I'm just thinking crazy. It's, it's, it's not a crazy theory. Anyway, what else we got? All right. Uh, Sean asks, do you think at the end of the season, Oliver will lose Thea, his team, and his eye? Would he seek revenge in season three? No, I, 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 I mean, that could happen. That very well could happen. 
My theory, though, t- as of tonight, and, and maybe my mind will change tomorrow, is that no, uh, he kills uh, Slade this season. I believe I don't believe Slade makes it to next season now. Um, and once again, he could, he totally could, and you could be totally right. But that's how I see it. You guys, uh, I think if anyone, he's gonna lose Canary. He's not gonna lose Thea. He needs Thea. He needs a queen in there going into season three. Mm, yeah. And. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't see him losing Thea. Um, maybe a part of his team, but not the Trinity. And I don't see him losing his eye. I see him losing Roy, kinda. I I would love to see Roy <laughs> die. Okay, uh, let's take two more. Oh, okay. Um, well, I believe this is inherent. But George Farrington asks, was it implied when Moira was talking to Ollie that she knew that he's the arrow, and sh- she is proud of what he has done? I have no doubt. No, no, no. Yes. I, I think they made it very, very clear that, um, I, and you know what? I ha- I've had the suspicion ever since I think episode two of season one. Remember when he was kidnapped by her mm-hmm. and he got out as Arrow? I, I have I've always suspected she may have known right from there. I think she's known for a long time. So yeah, I think it was totally implied. Yeah, I think I think she knows. She said she knew sometime around when the undertaking was going down. Um, she's a really smart woman, so yes, yes definitely. And yeah. it, it was so hardy of her to keep it hidden until that very moment. Yeah. All right, last question. Ben Kennedy asks, if the Flash pilot gets picked up, do you think Oliver's child will be explored on the Flash TV show, or will it be explored on Arrow? It's possible, but it, you remember, it's it's not like... I was joking around as we were watching the episode. I said... Roy is his son. Uh, but no, remember, that that conversation probably only happened six years ago. So the child is probably five years old. I, I can't see a five-year-old child playing a significant role of any kind. Um, so I, I don't think so. I, I think the child will become an issue maybe in season four or season five of Arrow, but I don't see it becoming an issue on uh, on Flash. You guys think any different? I, mean, I, I have a feeling that when Oliver discovers that this child is still alive, there's going to be something that excites him, gives him life, gives him hope, gives him something. Because in the flashback, when he thought he lost the child, he was very upset about it in a way. So I think this child is going to be a positive benefit for Oliver. Therefore, he's coming into Arrow and not the Flash um, pilot, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, They can do so much Mm -hmm. with this revelation. They can sit yeah, on this for yeah. five seasons. Yep. If Arrow goes that long and introduce it in the last season, they can uh, in, uh, talk about him or her in the Flash pilot. Um, there's mm-hmm. so much they can do with it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I don't know that the child would necessarily show up in Arrow anytime soon, nor in the Flash pilot. But they can definitely make. Uh, they can definitely allude to the character. Uh, some people are speculating, is it Connor Hawk? I mean, they can do anything with this. They could take this character and have him be the next Arrow once this Arrow is done. So but he much. is only five years old. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> once this Arrow is done. Yeah. Yeah. Baby yeah. Arrow. A bit older. <laughs> well, all right, folks, that'll do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us and for being fans of Arrow with us. What uh, I mean, this episode changes everything. Uh, don't forget, we'll be back again next week same time same place to talk about the next episode of arrow where are they gonna go next i have no clue um so listen guys don't forget you can find us online in various places like Corey. Corey, where can people find you online you can find me k-a-o-r-i-o-u-s on instagram as well as twitter and where can people find you you can find me by my name at ann campion all the social media sites and you can also find me on all the various social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. You can find me at John Campia. So thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Don't forget to join us again next week. Tell all your friends about Arrow. Get them watching the show. It deserves even more viewers than it has. So until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>